Hi, I'm Amanda Silver. Today I'm going to show you some of the new features in Visual Studio 2013 and Blend that make it easier and faster than ever before to create an, a Windows Store application using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to Create New Project. Now one of the first things that you'll notice is that we have some new updated templates in Visual Studio 2013. Um, one of the newest ones is the Hub template. Now this Hub template uh, reflects a common design pattern that's emerging with full bleed images, teasers for content categories, and specific articles. It matches the pattern of a bunch of apps that are installed by default, like the Bing Finance app, if we go in from the right. Um, here's the Bing Finance app. You'll see this is the hero image. To the right, we start to see some of the, uh, some of the section to headers. And then if we look at some of the other apps, Bing Travel, for example, you can see that you know, we can click on specific articles in here. Um, and all of this is really kind of based on uh, what we now have in Visual Studio with the Hub application. So just to see what I'm showing here, we can come in here and just run it in the simulator. And you see that the template is filled out with pre-populated data that gets generated by default. Um, I can use all of the touch experience that, I, that you would come to expect. Um, I can click on an item. All of the navigation is all hooked up. And it really just looks like all of the applications that you're used to seeing in, uh, in Windows installed by default. So what I've done is I've basically taken that hub template and I've created my own application that reflects that experience. Um, now let's just run this in the simulator as well. And you see that this is basically data bound to some recipe information. Um, it's basically the same exact hub template that you've saw, you saw before, um, but with my own data bound information in here. OK, next thing I'm going to do. Uh, now, this still really looks like the hub template that's installed by default. And if I'm writing my own application, I might want to make it look a bit more customized. So what I'm going to do is just come in here. And I'm going to go to Solution Explorer. Now you'll see that this application is made up of um, all of the stuff that's in the hub template. But it has some additional things. Uh, I added an app.js and app.ts file. I'll show that a bit later. Um, I also have some scripts that I use. You'll see that in addition to using WinJS by default, I also use Angular and underscore to parse some JSON and to do some data binding at a later point. I also have the, uh, the database that I'm, I'm loading from that's in a JSON format. Now the first thing I'm going to do is open this in Blend. OK. Now one of the things that's really awesome about Blend is that I actually get to see the uh, application being rendered in, my, in, in Blend itself. Very, very cool. Um, and one of the things that's the most cool about this is that I can actually go in and turn on interactive mode. And I can actually start to navigate within the app directly from within Blend. This is very, very useful because it allows me to, let's say what I wanted to do is to edit this grid view portion of the hub template. I can go on and stop the interactive mode. And then I'm automatically at the context that I want to be in uh, for editing. Let's say I wanted to edit this, this item in particular. Um, I'm going to go back into interactive mode just to go to the basic right here. And the next thing I'm going to do is go in and add a fault that will make it look a bit more custom. So I'm going to go come into the Projects tab. I'm going to add a new folder. And I'm going to call this Fonts. And then I'm going to add an existing item. And the existing item is basically just an uh, open type font that I downloaded from the web called Bbus New. And I'm just going to insert that. And you'll notice that automatically, if I insert, if I insert this uh, open typeface font, um, it automatically creates a font face rule in my CSS. I click OK. Now, most often is uh, the case is when you're creating your own application, 
you want a family of fonts. Uh, you might want to use the core font. You might want to use a bold font, an italic font. In this case, we're just going to use all the defaults. And that will create my own new font family rule. Now, the next thing that I can do is come back to the interactive design mode here. Let's just uh, close the project again and move over. And I'm going to select this, uh, this element right here. And then what I'm going to do is come in and change the CSS properties. And I'm going to go to the inline style. And I'm going to search for the font family. And then you'll see that automatically this BBUS new shows up in my font family. And I can just set that right there. Immediately, I'm on the way to having a much more customized look and feel to my application. So I'm just going to save that. One of the coolest things that's in Blend for Visual Studio 2013 is uh, custom animations. So next thing I want to do is, is create an effect where the image scales as I open the application. So I'm just going to select the hero image in this case. And then I'm going to come into my CSS properties. And I'm going to select the hub.hero. Um, and in particular, I want to select the I want to select the hero image. Then what I'm going to do is go in and create an animation for it. So I just go into this animation uh, tab down here, and then I just hit plus. I'm going to call this the Ken Burns image, and then I'm going to set the duration to be uh, let's say five seconds. The delay to be zero, the iteration count to be one, the timing function to be ease in and out, the fill mode to be forwards, the direction to be normal, and the play state to start running. Then what I'm going to do is start editing the animation. Now, in this mode, what I can do is start to change uh, some of the elements on the, on the application over time. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to go back and do is Go to the CSS properties, and I'm going to add a transform. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is scale it. And I'm going to scale it by, let's see, uh, 1.2 and then 1.2. And then just to ensure that it continues to look right, I'm going to add a translate. And I'm going to translate it by negative uh, 66 picks. OK. So I'm done with the animation. I stop recording, hit Control-5, and see it running. And we can see that the image starts to look a bit more interactive and vibrant. Now I'm going to go back to Visual Studio. And automatically, you'll see that Visual Studio reloads all of the uh, code that I've edited and markup and HTML that I've edited in Blend. So they work really, really well together. Now what I'm going to show is when I have the application running, we have a live DOM explorer that allows me to inspect and change some of the elements in, this, in the HTML and CSS. So uh, first of all, if I start to navigate the DOM, um, we can start to see some of the elements that are selected. But I can also use this select element by click. And that allows me to come back into the application and select an item that I might want to inspect or change. Automatically, it updates the live DOM. So if we expand this out a bit more, you can see it. Um, and that's basically the element that is the family favorites um, that shows the title of the classic Kapanada. Um, in this case, what I want to do, just to show you that it's actually live, is change some of the padding. So I'll just change this to be 100, just so you can see it. And I need to add the picks there. Um, and so you see, if we come back in here, that that really added a ton. So maybe 100 isn't right. Maybe I want to come back. Again, I need to select it. Maybe I want to come back, and instead of doing 100, I just want to do 10. OK, that's pretty cool. Another thing that's pretty cool about this is 
I can come in. This is all still interactive. So I'm using my finger right now to uh, go and view some of these elements. And then I can, again, use the selector item to select an element here. Now, again, just to show some of the, um, some of the interactivity of this DOM Explorer, I can come in and I can change the inline style of that element to be display. none. And that will basically make the uh, image go away. And I'm doing that just so that I can show you that I can then take that div that that corresponds to, and I can literally drag and drop it above another uh, item container. So you can see that I'm actually having a very, very live experience for um, this DOM editing. OK, another really awesome thing about the editing experience in Visual Studio while I'm debugging is the JavaScript console window. This has had a ton of work on it over the, past, uh, over the last release. And it, I think it's something that you're really going to enjoy working with. So now what, one of the things we can do is we can go in here and, you know, for example, run uh, document.body. And you'll see that I'm starting to get IntelliSense in here get elements uh, by class name. And then I might want to look up page title. Now, you'll see that I can actually expand this and look at the content that gets returned back. Um, I can also right click on the content that gets re returned back. And I can view it as either HTML, which is the default in this case, or I could view it as an object, a JavaScript object. And that has the proto, and it has all of the methods and things like that that I might want to go and inspect. Um, the other thing I can do is I can actually set values in this case. So I'm just going to go back and uh, reevaluate that same thing. And I'm going to get the middle of that, the inner HTML in that case. And I'm going to assign it to good eats. OK. Now we can go back to the Solution Explorer, and we see that the title of the uh, application has changed to good eats. So that's really pretty cool. I'm going to stop the application running just to show you some of the profiling and diagnostics experiences for JavaScript. Now to profile, we don't really start with debugging. What we do is we go to the debug window, and then we go to the performance and diagnostics tab. We call this the diagnostics hub. Now this is really the epicenter of all of the tools that you might want to use to profile and uh, diagnose your application. In this case, what I want to do is I want to look at the HTML UI responsiveness. I just click that, and I hit start. Now this has to run a VS standard collector. And then what I can do is just scroll, interact with the application a bit, and stop it. What this does is it basically looks at your application running, and then it basically collects all, everything that was going on in your app. Now if I wanted to just check out the load time, for example. I could zero in on that and zoom in. And then we see that that's pretty expanded. Then I could do that again if I really want to. And again, zoom in. Now, what I'm really focusing on in this case is the HTML parsing. And we can start to see that the HTML parsing is taking up a considerable amount of time. If we look down, we can see that some of the script evaluations are actually taking up, again, a considerable amount of time. Um, let's just zero in on this so we can see it. And you can see that here's the HTML parsing. Here's script evaluation. That's basically running the script, et cetera. 
pretty cool tool. Next thing I'm going to do is go back to the performance and diagnostics tool. This time what I'm going to do is look at my JavaScript memory usage. I'm going to hit start. And in this case, what I do is when I, it's, it's constantly taking snapshots of uh, what's going on in the JavaScript memory manager in the Chakra engine. And I can interact with it just like I normally would. And it, there might be some particular user interaction with your app that you want to start to profile. So I can then just go in and take a heap snapshot. Now this captures a screenshot of what's going on in that case. And then I can interact with the app a bit more. And what I might want to do is load something and then unload it, go back, and take another heap snapshot. Now the really cool thing about this is it allows you to take as many heap snapshots as you want. But let's just stop this. And even without the application running, I can start to inspect the differences between the memory profile of heap snapshot 1 and heap snapshot 2. I can first of all look at all of the objects, but I can also look at um, all of the objects that were different between those two different heap snapshots. So I can start to look in the HTML div elements and look at all of these objects and see all of the places where all of these objects were referenced. I can show the roots view just to show um, how it's actually being uh, held onto. I can go back to the diag, diag session, the uh, diagnostic session, and I can just look at the deltas, for example. And this is basically telling you all of the um, count differences that are different between heap snapshot one and heap snapshot two. So you can really zero in on what's going on in your application. What I've shown you today is really only a smattering of the features in Visual Studio 2013 and Blend that help you build an application for Windows using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. I implore you to download the tools, uh, play around with them, get familiar, and write some really mind-blowing code.